proteins now. I'm going to keep going with proteins, even though I might make a separate video out of this because I might have reached my 512 megabyte limit. Um, so proteins, you're definitely going to get more questions about them than carbohydrates or lipids and then nucleic acids as well. Many more questions about those. So um, here we have the idea that the specific order of amino acids in a polypeptide which means if you change one of the subunits, one of those amino acids, you might change the overall shape of the protein and the overall shape is what determines its function. Shape, we'll say it here and not for the last time, shape and conformation are the same thing, right? And so that's a word that's commonly used here, conformation. Um, amino acids have a directionality they have an amino end and a carboxyl end. This is along the lines of them wanting you to know uh, the composition of these subunits. Um, and then they have this thing called an R group. All of this is, again, in the syllabus. So they might ask you to identify some parts of these or more likely talk about why this protein has a different shape than that one. It's because it's made of different amino acids in a different sequence order and that difference in the amino acids lies in the R group because all the other parts are the same. This R group might give it properties of being a, uh, not attracted to water or attracted to water. So this is kind of like the lipid idea, right? Or maybe charged, which would also cause it to be attracted to water because it loses or gains electrons. It's ionic. And the interaction of these R groups determine a lot about the structure the conformation, the shape, and therefore the function of that part of the protein. So here we go with the amino acids. Again, here's that learning objective, the properties of monomers. I think they were talking about amino acids here and later nucleotides, right? The type of bonds that connect them are, again, covalent, but in this case, we give it a specific name of peptide bond. So here's just some examples of the hydrophobic ones and Due to that learning objective, they might expect you to, you know, recognize that this is an amino acid. It's got the carboxyl group. It's got the amine group. Uh, all of them have that. And then this R group is the thing that makes them different. And therefore, the protein comprised of these different R group amino acids would be that. Here is a very typical kind of question. What if one of these, meaning these with the same basic nonpolar property, was substituted, because of a mutation, was substituted for another in a polypeptide chain and a protein, there might not be much difference in the shape of that protein since their R groups have the same nonpolar kind of characteristic. So here we have some polar ones. What if one of these, by mutation, was substituted for one of the nonpolar ones? Your prediction, one of the power words, your prediction would be like this would more likely uh, cause a change in the shape and therefore the function of that protein. And so here we have some electrically charged ones, acidic and basic come into play here too. And again, if by mutation, one of these basic ones was substituted for one of these acidic ones, you would predict a bigger change in the shape, structure, and therefore function of that protein. So uh, here we again see an example uh, back to that one learning objective that it's um, uh, dehydration synthesis that puts these together. That special covalent bond called a peptide bond is thus formed. And now we have again emphasis on again the order of amino acids determines the conformation and therefore the function of this protein. So now we have the specific knowledge, again, this is uh, what's called essential knowledge. Um, they have what we humans have called primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary levels of organization. And so this is how we humans have chose to uh, describe these. And so uh, hopefully, again, this is review. We have the idea that the primary structure simply refers to what sequence of amino acids there are, which amino acids are where. Here's an example of lysozyme. And again, this will determine everything else. 
because everything else is about how it folds up and what shape it in, uh, ends up being in. The primary structure is going to determine that. The primary structure is determined ultimately by the sequence of nucleotides in DNA. That connection is a big obvious idea too. So here we have our classic, classic example of what happens if you change the primary structure even a little bit with, again, hemoglobin, which was an example of so many different things. We had one amino acid change due to one nucleotide base change in the DNA recipe for hemoglobin, and that caused enough of a shape change to cause this deadly disease. So here we have secondary structure, which is defined as um, uh, either this shape or that shape being due to folding due only to hydrogen bonds and not between R groups, not between R groups, right? That's the nature of secondary structure. These are very common kinds of foldings that proteins have. And you can see here that one protein might have different areas, it very commonly does, that have either uh, of these, either or, um, type of folding that we call alpha helix and beta pleated heat. Here we have irregular foldings that are due to interactions between R groups. Irregular focus here, not regular and repeated like secondary. And these are between R groups and include all different kinds of possible bonds, right? But between R groups. And here we have that um, disulfide bridge bond, which kind of also separates proteins from the other macromolecules, they don't contain sulfur. So here we have the idea of what we humans have called quaternary structure it has really nothing to do with four. It's just like in our minds, the fourth level of structure. And that means you have at least two polypeptide chains combined to make one protein molecule, more than two polypeptide chains to make one molecule. Here we have one, two, three. Here we have one, two, three, four. This is what makes a protein organized at the quaternary level. So here you have the idea that a particular protein, part hidden by my face here, will have some irregular folding, or ooh, that's a little more regular, will have some irregular folding, will have possibly some secondary folding, all of that is due to which amino acids are where. Here we have another interesting thing here. I'm getting sick and tired of unnatural raisins, you know, those ones that are made in test tubes. So I'm going to spend extra money buying these natural raisins because they must be better for me than those unnatural raisins. And especially because this is, by God, the American trail mix. This is not some kind of foreign trail mix.